Hello and welcome back to the Thai League Central podcast. I'm Gyan, filling in for your regular host, Ta Lao, and making my debut in the hosting chair. Alongside me, I have Ob, as always. Hi, Ob, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. It's, I mean, played, foot, like, played football last night, had a good game, and I'm in a good mood today. And more importantly, how are the house plans? The house plans is all right. <laughs> the sun, it's not too hot, so they don't get like sunburn. So that's good. Good news. All right, Ob. So what we're going to do today, basically, we'll start off by analyzing the weekend and the ACL race. Good news for Port, Ratchaburi, and Chiang Rai. Bad news for Sukhothai, Chonburi, Buriram, and Bangkok United. Then we'll move on to some rumor roundup since we are in December and the transfer window is fast approaching. And then in the second part of the pod, I will have Alec, a Chiang Rai supporter, to talk about their ACL campaign. So let's get into it. All right, so the last weekend began with BG beating Nakhon Matosima to secure a place in the group stage. Following that, Port tried to follow them by doing the same thing and make their place in the group stage a bit more secure when they played against Chonburi. Port emerged 2-0 winners from that game. Bob, what do you think of that one? I think... I think it was a, a, an entertaining game, like, like we expect it to be. Um, I think res- the result was justified. I think Port were the better team, and they were far more clinical in front of goals. So, so I mean, the facts are, uh, know, they're on Port's FC side, but I think it's a tactically interesting game because both sides play with a 4-4-2 with little control or battle in midfield. And that makes for a, like a, a quick back-and-forth game. But I'll get into it later. But, I mean, what, what are your thoughts on the game, though? Yeah, well, it's a game which effectively sees Chonburi get eliminated from the running uh, to be in the AFC Champions League. And I was quite surprised, considering the stakes on that game, the number of young players that played, you know, you had... Uh, of course, Sahara starting in the middle with Grisada. Uh, you had Chat Mongkorn on the left on le- left back, Chanarong at left wing. They even brought on a younger centre back as well later on in the game. So quite interesting from Sasom to go with these young players. And what do you make of their performance? To be honest, I, I'm really impressed with the young players, and I thought it complemented the way Sasom wanted to play. That is, be more more energetic compared to to the game against BG Batum United, where they 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 started the game with. Kushida, who is you know, in his late thirties and has 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 been been through a, a a lengthy injuries that which like slows him down significantly. And by having Kisada Gaman and Sahalat together, that's that's a a young, energetic destroyer and box to box midfielder duo. It, I think it works for Shambhuri because they created chances. Kisada played, I think had I think he had a decent game. I think Sahalat. He had one good chances, but you know, overall, I think the young players did well. Um, one player that really stood out for me from Chonburi was Chanarong from Sigao, who started as the right winger, you know, drifting inside, linking up play. Then his left foot is amazing, and I, I thought he he looked great when he came on in the beach, in the away loss to BG Batum United. I think, and I think he deserved the starts against Port FC, considering that. Look, they know Kevin De Rombram, Port FC left back, was gonna gonna attack, and Sasom. I think Sasom played Chanarong on the right to counter that, and it, and in a way, Port FC they they actually just let Kevin do his thing, and then use the mid- midfielder to kind of stop Chanarong instead of you know telling Kevin to hold back a bit. I don't know, which I thought was interesting. Yeah, so not the best result for Chonburi, not the best in the short term, but you've got to say, long term, they're really, they're finally coming you know, to fulfill the promise of that academy. And don't forget, they've also got City Cho on loan at Thrat, who scored an absolute wonder goal from inside his own half over the weekend. So he's another player that Chonburi fans can look forward to coming back next season. So we'll move on now to Sukotai, who lost against Rayong at the weekend, bottom side Rayong, uh, who have had a slight turn of form since hiring Masamitaki, but for Sukotai, it is an absolute collapse. They've only managed one win and four losses in their last five games. 
are they having a bit of a meltdown? And if so, why? I don't. I don't think it's a it's a meltdown. I, I think I think it's it's the defeat to Rayong that kinds of add that sense of urgency and and panic into the into the overall results and and run of of Super Thai. However, I think missing Epson Melo and that was a big big miss. Still, <laughs> I, I don't I don't think it's a I don't it's a it, the, I don't think the the fire bats are in crisis. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, I mean, they did probably overperform a little bit coming out of the break. They started really really quickly, really well. Uh, and they're probably, you know, talking about Champions League for them was probably a bit a bit fanciful to begin with. So nothing to cause alarm yet. I'm sure a mid-table finish would still be good for them. Um, also on Saturday, Ratchaburi did their work and won in a very tough away trip to Supanburi. It was only their second away win of the season, actually. And it was a very vital one because it really helped them cement their place in the top four. This is, of course, after Milos Djokic has arrived at the club, and they've had two wins since he, since he arrived, first against Mupurkan at home, and then now a tough away trip to Supanburi. So how has Milos changed the team, and do you think that they're pretty much nailed on for AFC now? I think it's too early to say Milos has have any positive or negative impact mm-hmm. in, in, into the team. I think it's too short. Still, I, I think having Milos in the training ground and in and around the dressing room is, I think it's a good plus for Ratchaburi. And this is a manager and a head coach who's, who knows Thai football really well. He, he's been here for a really long time. And we know he, he does organize the team solidly. He knows how, how to get results. He knows how to, when, when you're leading, he, he shuts the opposition down really well. I think that will be really beneficial for Ratchaburi, who, who's already good at going forward. Now they have someone who, who, who offers that a different perspective, mm-hmm. maybe a, a more solid approach. And yeah, if, if Ratchaburi could learn from what Milos has to offer and maybe sit back a bit, I think that could in turn benefit their attacking players because they're already fast. And instead of what they're doing, like right now Ratchaburi is, they're all going crazy. They're, they're running like madmen. They're attacking, they're really direct. Maybe they need to just slow down a bit, be more compact, and then look to exploit that space. That might, that might be a better approach to the league in the long run. And, and, and obviously in the AFC Champions League in the future as well. Yeah, it, it seems like quite a smart appointment. I mean, first of all, remember, it's not a managerial change. He's not replacing anybody. Uh, so Chai Mai Milai is still there. Uh, in, in the staff, he's just you know adding to that, and as you say, he's bringing more balance because they are a team with an attacking constellation. You know, they've got Longil, Carbue, Nurun, uh, Takapan, Bonsai, so many players who, who love to get forward. And I think yeah, he adds a little bit of balance to the team, which will help them a lot. And it probably means they're also thinking about the Champions League already because you know that approach of just attacking. Uh, not holding back is not going to work when you're playing a one-off, a playoff game against a team from Japan or Korea or China. So they're probably thinking ahead and saying that, yeah, Milos and the defensive solidity he brings is a good benefit for us. Moving on to Sunday now, Bangkok United and their new head coach, Torsta Wan Sipan, really wanted a win against Police Terror, but they could only manage a one-all draw with Natawut Suksum coming off the bench to rescue a point for them. Bob, we were at that game. What did you think of this performance? It's... It's a bit of a weird one from Bangkok's perspective. First half, Bangkok looked a bit lack of inspiration going forward. They were quite rigid. And I don't think they took much risk going forward. There were passes that could have been played, but they, they hold on on the ball a bit too long. In the second half, they're, they're more, there's more urgency to their play. Well, obviously, partly because they're a goal down. But overall, I think I agree with what Coach Coach Ben or Toto Wan Sipan had to say about at the end of the game, which he said that he was proud of his his team, like motivation to get back into the game, and especially how how the how the side press when the team is out of possession. So, I think it's it's a fifty fifty for me. I don't think it's the best game, but I think we can accept that considering Toto Wan just got into his got into it into the job so I'll, I'll give him 
more chance before I, I, I go on to like be fully critical of him. Yeah, and you've got to think now, it's getting really crowded up there at the upper end of the league. Where do you think BU can expect to finish based on getting results like this? Oh, I, I look, uh, the, oh, it's going to be tough. Mm. They, they, I think they should focus to be on like the top four, be consistent, you know, get in the top four by the end of the season and have a, a really strong cup run. I think this season, when there's managerial changes, a good cup run, I think, could actually lift the spirits of the, of the team and, and, and most importantly, the, the fan base that, hey, there's, there's something we could hold on to, something we could actually you know, inspire us. Yeah, and I think they really need that right now, personally. I think BU needs something to lift them up a little bit. Speaking of a team that needs a lift, Buriram United lost 3-1 at home to Samutbrakan City on Sunday as well. One of the most shocking results of the weekend. Now, uh, let me read you some stats about Buriram. So Buriram, as we know, have an absolute fortress in the Chang Arena. They barely ever lose at home, even when they're struggling. But this season, they've managed to already, they've already lost three games at home and six losses overall. So, Buriram have only lost two home games in the past three years before this one and managed to lose three already this season, right? In Gamma's entire first spell, he, or, he only lost two home games and he's already lost two since coming first to Murgatong, now to Smutpakan City. And looking at the points percentage, so points percentage would be like taking the number of points they picked up out of a total possible points. Uh, they, of course, set the record for, for points total and by extension for points percentage in 2018 with 85%. Uh, in Gamma's uh, 2015 season, they had 82%. Now, last year, it was considered to be a pretty you know, uh, poor season by their standard. That was 64% of possible points picked up. This year, it's only 43%. Less than half of all the available points of them where have dropped a ton of points already this season. So what... What do they have to do to fix the fix situation they're in right now? Well, that's a million baht question there. How do we fix Buriram? Yeah. How do we take Buriram back to where they belong? <laughs> mm. at, at the start of the season, Thai League Central, we, we, you know, I mean, you did yeah. an interview with Busida Bandovic, you know, and we titled it, you know, bringing Buriram back to the top. Yeah. And now he's gone. Um, the young players, the super shock, super shy, super nut, they'll be leaving for Leicester City soon. If you, if you, if, you know, on a loan deal, you know, at a time when the club's not playing well and they really needed someone like the, I mean, the young kids has been consistent for them in the past like year or two. And wow, I don't know. Again, yeah, to be honest. <laughs> I'm sorry, listener. I, I, I don't know how to fix Buri Ram. Nevin doesn't pay me, so that's, I can't give that answer for me. <laughs> However, I, I, I know how to make them less worse. <laughs> less worse. Uh, and that is, they, be, they just need to take the shield pill. You know, just look approach every game like it's a cup final. I know this is a, this is a cliche, yeah. but I don't think Buriram approach the home game against Samut Prakar City like it's a cup final. I think Buriram approach that game like, hey, this is our home. We, we are the better team. We need to win this. No. And I think that's... I think it doesn't work not when your team is playing badly, not when there's a change in changes in management. The squad looks, you know, it looks like the, the, there's no confidence in there. Super, Super Cho looks, he, he looks miserable when the team conceded. He looks miserable. And look, and especially, and I, I'm really mad about this actually. I'm quite disappointed with Siba Rock's performance. That goal against Jaren Sak Wongon, mm. that shouldn't have been a goal. That goal against, you know, uh, Jakit Laptakun. No, he should have saved that. And, I mean, it's a great strike, but you know, I mean, he's a candidate for 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 the tie number one. So I think he does. He needs to do to do better. Especially, he's a senior member of the Buriram squad. So 
he needs to set a standard. One interesting fact we've heard from Jaron Sakwongkorn, the Samut Pakan City right winger, was that he actually meant to shoot and like, to aim his shot at the near post because he, 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 he said, you know, he knows uh, Siwarak from the Thai national team squad and training camp. And he kind of reads Siwarak's mind, mind that, oh, Siwarak's going to come out for the cross if he crosses. So Duran Sak just basically, uh, I'll just try my luck and aim for the, for the near post and maybe catch Siwarak like, out. And it's sad and it's, it's annoying from a Buriram's perspective that it actually worked out. So yeah, I don't know how to fix fix, fix Buriram, but they just need to focus on result first. Yeah, and I mean, I think Gamma lifted Mung Tong from a worse situation last year, but it's all about how the squad responds. You know, will they listen to him? Will they respond to him? Because I'm sure it's all in his head how to win a football game. That's the one thing Gamma knows better than anything else: how to win a Thai league football game. But it's whether that, that message gets through to the players. And that'll be the interesting thing you know, with all their games coming up right now. Oh, I, I do have one question for you. And this is no secret to anyone, but there's been rumors that Buriram uh, is planning, and some say it's already done. You know, they're planning to, to change oh, like four foreigner slots in the second leg. Yeah. My question is, do you think there needs to be a change? And second question is, do you think it affects the players and that in turn is the, the root cause of the dip in, in, in performance and results? Well, it's a tough one because as you know, like the rules wise, you weren't originally allowed to change all your players again. I think from a purely like professional, like human standpoint as well, like to, to bring a player to Thailand, to have them quarantine for months, have some of them, you know, struggle for various reasons upon arrival, to go through all that and then not really give them a fair shake. I think it's, it's, it's pretty sad from that perspective. And I really hope those players find new clubs in Thailand. I can think of many clubs who want players with those qualities. I really hope they find new clubs in Thailand and prove that they are good players. Because I think we can all see that they're good players in there, uh, but they haven't had the chance to show it yet. Uh, but on the other hand, if you're not going to get the best out of them and you're going to bench them like Gamma did against Sukho Thai, uh, then it's a bit unfair to the manager to not give him a, a, of his foreign player picks if, they're, if it's possible to do so. And, you know, a change in foreign players is much better than benched foreign players from Buram's perspective. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 ho- I wish those players were treated better, but you, given the circumstances, like, Gamma was always going to want to make his Gamma picks, you know? Like, last year, Meng Tong's revival, a large part of that was due to the arrival of Bruno Gallo and Derle. You know, he had his picks and they helped lift the team. So, I'm sure it's part of his conditions that if you hire me, you have to pick my players. And that's kind of all there is to it. And I, I don't really want to make a, a normative judgment here whether it's the right thing to do or wrong thing to do. It's what's going to happen because it's what's going to happen. All right. Well, that's a, that's a pretty good seg- segue, actually, into our next section, which is about the transfer rumors with the upcoming window. So stay tuned for that. All right. So here we are to discuss some of the most recent rumors and soon-to-be-completed transfers uh, in the Thai league. We start off with one deal that has just been confirmed today of Diogo Luis Santo has signed for your club, BG Patum United. How is he going to do? This is a 10 out of 10 signing. Mm. He's going to win us a league. This is the <laughs> best ever foreigner to ever, ever grace the Thai league. Uh, I'm already planning my, my, my title celebration. I've been saying this for months, mate. Plan them. <laughs> But in all, in all seriousness, look, uh, it's, it's not going to be Diogo or Tirasin. It's going to be Diogo and Tirasin. Look, it's, it's the Thai League's worst kept secret that Diogo or Luis Santo will return to Thailand. 
and look as a BG fan, I I welcome him. But as a romantic, as a f- I'm a football romantic. I want I want BG to win the league with uh, someone like Jen Rob, you know, a, 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 a Thai a Thai striker who's an underdog. Everybody looks down on him. We the people and the majority of the Thai fans make fun of him for his like oh he doesn't score. He he's just all hard work. And then you know we go on to win the league with him up top and. Victor Cardoso as a as a club top scorer, <laughs> scoring ten penalties every game. No, I mean it's a season, sorry. <laughs> but look, Diogo is a great signing. I I I can't wait to see him play. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, let's I... see. Let's, let's see who. Let my 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 point here is, let's see who he partners up top, and how that sh- sh- would shape up. I mean, I think, you know, knowing Dusit, there will always be room for Jen Rob in that team, you know, whether it's a striker or left back, you know, there'll be a room for Jen Rob somewhere in that team because he, he has been great this season. But yeah, Diogo, you can't turn that down if the option is there. And yeah, I mean, it's the first time I've ever, ever heard you say a BG signing is 10 out of 10. So I, now I'm excited as well. I've never heard you praise a BG decision to this extent before. Um, Another high-profile Brazilian player in the news today is Heberti, because he wrote his farewell message to Port FC. Uh, the, the question now is, is he going to return to Mueang Tong? Can Mueang Tong afford to keep him? Is he going to go abroad for a new club? Is he going to stay in Thailand and make a surprise move? So where do you think Heberti's future lies, and where do you think Heberti's future should lie? I think he should leave Thailand. <laughs> Look, I think it's it's it's... It would be great to see him. I I, I want to see Heberty in, in maybe Chinese Super League, mm. cutting in from the right, scoring screamers from outside the box. That would be fun. I don't because simply because I don't think I don't think he there's no motivation for him to return to Mung Tong. I don't and I don't think Mung Tong under Mario Jurovsky needs someone like Heberty. Obviously, the talent is there, but I don't think it it suits it suits the 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 idea that the club's trying to sell at the moment. The club, meaning Mentong, mm. and at Port FC, there's already like a bunch. There's a wealth of attacking talents there. I don't think they need Hebati. They never needed him. I I don't think they're gonna needed him. Although obviously, they will, some of the fans might miss him. I I say most fans, maybe some. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but where do you think realistically he'll end up? Do you think China's a realistic option for him? Yeah, I mean, I don't know much about Korean football, but I would like to think that that with Hepatitis profile, like he's an amazing attacker. He's amazing on the ball, but I don't think he 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 have that that work rate to. To be appreciated in 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 the K League, maybe in Japan would be a, a a nice place, but China would be a great a great place for him. That that that's a league where foreign foreign players are expected to to be the X factor to to change the game on on his own. I think it suits Hepati, you know, like Hepati's game. Yeah, well, I think we don't like to see Hepati go and do well and. Personally, if he does stay at Mung Tong, it kind of undermines their message of we need to change and we need to bring in young players uh, and their justification for selling players like Sarat, who means so much to the club, you know, being like, look, we have to, the financial constraints are different now. We have to change the way we operate. I think to turn around and sign Heberty back would be a bit like, what's really going on there? You know, it's a bit incoherent and what's going on there. So I'm, I'm interested to see how this develops. And the last one is a rumor slash a confirmed transfer already. Adnan Orahovac is going to return to Rachuap for the second leg of the season. He has already been registered in their FA Cup squad. So it's a matter of time before he returns to league action. Looks like he'll be replacing uh, William Henrique in the quota, who it looks like he's going to leave Rachuap in most likelihood. Although that could also change. Uh, and they are apparently targeting to bring back another defender who partnered Orahovac last season, which is Artyom Filipiosan, who's playing right now 
uh, in the Liga One Indonesia. So they're hoping to bring him back as well to rekindle that defensive solidity that helped them win the League Cup last season. So what do you think of these moves? I I, I was oh I was so upset when they let Adnan go. For me that he when he his his season with Bajua, I think he was one of the best defenders in the league. And I was you know I I, I hate it when he left. I'm so happy that uh, he's returning and maybe Art Yom returning. That, that's another great player. Versatile, mm. reliable, experienced. I don't think they need both of them. I would, if I could choose one, I would go with Adnan. But look, if both of them is willing to return, then why not? Yeah, and you have to wonder where they're going to end up playing Art Yom because you could put him in defense. You already have Jan Basna and Adan Orohovac, or you could put him in the face of midfield. Interesting to see how they line up there. And, I mean, if the quarter spot is free, it makes sense to reunite them because they do need to, you know, pick up their results. They're doing well now, but I think defense is what keeps you in the league. And I think that for Joker to tighten up at the back, like they did last season, they could be, you know, they could be excellent uh, once again and really, you know, get clear of that relegation zone quickly if they get those two back in. So thank you all for being on for the first part of this podcast. We're now going to transition to talk to Alec about Xing Rai United and their ACL campaign. All right, so on to the second part of our podcast now. We're going to be discussing Xing Rai and their ACL campaign. And here to do that with me is Alec. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. And um, given the circumstances, it's exciting to be here, I guess. Yeah, I mean, as a Chiang Rai fan, it must have been a really roller coaster of emotions over the past week. Uh, you lost 5 0 to FC Seoul, came back to do an incredible 2 1 win over the same opposition, and then last night with a 2 2 over at Melbourne Victory. So, after all this happened, what are your thoughts? Just really happy with what I saw from the squad. Um, and then the way they were able to turn it around. Big picture, like you said, you know, uh, two two games on the bounce that they really just showed a, a lot. Uh, but even in the microcosm of that um, second match against Melbourne, you know, coming back at, from 2-0 down at halftime, right? Uh, they, they showed just a lot of resilience and, and uh, over the course of the tournament and then, of course, you know, in those games individually. And um, I think that it was... I'm really, uh, I'm really impressed with with uh, showing us all in the ACL. Did not enter with high expectations. Uh, well, I should say when we first started the campaign, almost what ten months ago, uh, I did have high expectations. Uh, I was quickly brought back down to earth, uh, given you our, our immediate results, and then the restart was not uh, the prettiest. You know, five zero, like you said. Um, but given the the past two games, I. I I would say that it's been a successful campaign. Yeah, like you said, it is kind of the story of two comebacks. One is across the two two legs, two games against FC Seoul, and one within uh, the Melbourne game. So I think that, that says a lot about their, their resilience, like you said. Um, looking at the, the Chiang Rai squad, you know, we talk about uh, Thai clubs in the ACL. The last two clubs to do well, Boyram and Meng Tong, when they did well, you know, had massive squads. And you look at Chiang Rai, a lot of these players either come from the academy uh, or they were signed very young or they came straight out of T2. So you look at the academy, for example, they've got Ekanit, Chotipat, and Apirak, who they bought through their own ranks. Uh, and then playing very recently in T2 were Akarowin, Somkit, Sarawut, and Suchanon. And all of them put in, I think, frankly, above standard, above expectation performances. So what did you make of that from, from this team? And they, how they raise their levels for the tournament. Yeah, so I think um, the young core, both of the academy players and the the players that almost, you know, are academy players, they've been there since they were very young. Um, I think that during the Melbourne match, uh, several pundits on the broadcast, on the English broadcast on, on Fox, where uh, there's a lot of questioning of Chang Rai's character and, and their spirit and, and things like that. Um, and, you know, I think the second half performance really shut them up. But I think that that 
uh, is why I think they have, you know, Chiang Rai has always really excelled in that. They have a, a very tight knit group of players. A lot of that's because they've played together for so long. They've come through the same academy. They've had the same coaching staff and, and a lot of the position, uh, a lot of the position coaches have been the same since academy. So all of that just fosters a, a really close, uh, tight knit squad that, that I think that, um, you, you see that come through, right? You, you never see, uh, or I should say rarely, you never say never. I, you rarely see the entire squad look defeated. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you might see an occasional, you know, a downtrodden face or something, but I think generally there's always somebody there to pick them up. And the young players, you know, obviously Bill was uh, huge in our win over Seoul. Um, but if you look at the contribution from, uh, Silvercorn, especially in the last match, I think I just saw earlier today, he was uh, chosen as man of the match against Melbourne. Uh, tremendous performance on both sides of the ball. When you look at the contributions from, uh, well, Pittywatt, again, Pittywatt had a, an amazing game last night in a very tough position, right, without some of our key players being there. You know, Pittywatt really stepped up and, and shined. And then you look at um, Apirak, yeah, you know, obviously he made the mistake, but uh, you could see just a, an immediate turnaround in the team uh, from, you know, when Zeranon was replaced. And Zeranon was great, but I, I think, again, it just goes to show that um, they have a really good connection. Uh, all of the players do. Mm -hmm. um, and and that, that is, you know, where, what they lack in squad size and things like that, I think they make up for in that. Yeah, and I think that the, the, those points that are being made by commentators and such, they apply to, like, a previous generation of Thai players where uh, when they go behind, when the game is going their way, uh, in the past, we'd see Thai teams sort of give in under pressure a little bit. But this Chiang Rai squad is a very new team. A lot of these players have never been at this level before. And I think that they are showing that the new generation of Thai talent thinks very differently, has a very different mentality. And I think that was probably the most pleasing part of it, was the mentality from them. Obviously, I, I mean, granted, we had a chance to qualify for the final 16, going into the Melbourne match, right? But I don't know if I would say that that, was the primary motivation. I think, like you said, a lot of them just feel like they have a lot to prove, right? This is some of those young players. This is their first time being on a big stage, the Ekinets and the Silvercorns and, uh, you know, those, those that are being touted as like the next stars of Thailand, right? This is their first chance to really display that on such a big level. Maybe they're vying for, you know, contracts overseas or something like that. But again, you know, I think there's just a lot more on the line uh, personally for the, the players as opposed to just, um, trying to you know, get through, I guess. Yeah, so on that point, which uh, specific players impressed you the most? And do you think any of them will earn big moves to bigger clubs in Asia after this tournament? Um, so going in, I expected a lot from Ekinet and Silvercorn, obviously. Um, both of them have had very shaky comebacks. You know, they were both out for quite a while with injuries. And I think they both got off to a very rocky start in the league and then uh obviously in the 5-0 loss they were not that great nobody was right everybody was kind of bad there um Silvercorn definitely turned around like I said I fully agree with him being man of the match against Melbourne just an amazing performance on both sides ran the whole match really put it all out there um uh, got a goal even though you, you can call it a fluke um but, you know, you, you don't, you have to earn your luck, right? He, it doesn't just come out of nowhere. So Silvercorn definitely deserves a big shout. Um, Ekinet, I still haven't, uh, I still don't think he's put all the pieces together since coming back. Yeah, there's flashes of, of his brilliance, but it seems like uh, he's still maybe trying to regain some confidence or something like that in his decision making. Um, but I do want to point out um, Chody Pot uh, mm. and Chaiwat. Uh, I'm sorry, not Chaiwat, Sur Surya. Uh, I think both of them put in very uh, exceptional performances in the league. But when you look at putting them on a Champions League stage, uh, I mean, they were, you know, Ekin and Silvercorn had very high expectations. When you look at the Surya's, the uh, Chody Pots, uh, you didn't have as high expectations for them, right? So, so I think when you look at maybe overperformers or, or biggest surprises, those, those are the two you got to shout out. Yeah, for sure. And also mention uh, some kid who, you know, T2 recently, uh, and he was taking on players and, you know, dribbling confidence on the ball. I'm really impressed by that. And yeah, just yeah that was um, uh, just a tremendous uh, um, 
amount of confidence, like I said, where it looked like maybe some players lacked it a bit. I think others made up for it. Um, and for for them to be on the uh, in the Champions League for the first time against you know great competition, uh, yeah, they didn't play like they were uh, the underdogs whatsoever. They they were really uh, confident on the ball, uh, very you know straightforward, and I think that was great. Uh, it was a nice change from the typical Chiang Rai style of you know pragmatism. Lastly, now we should talk about what is next for Chiang Rai because they're very close to securing a playoff spot for next year's Champions League, it looks like Chiang Rai are 90% through uh, at that phase. So where do you see them going now in terms of, let's say, in the upcoming transfer window and maybe a managerial appointment? What's next for them? Yeah, obviously we need to sort the manager situation out. Um, I think they'll take a lot of confidence. I will, uh, we'll see how the Beijing game goes. You know, I, I really do hope that we can end on a, a high note. Um, Again, nobody's expecting anything of us uh, against that, but Beijing's already qualified. Uh, so, I mean, who knows? Who knows what will happen? Uh, so I would like to see us end on a high note, carry that confidence back into the league uh, as we, yeah, hopefully finish out the, these qualifications. Um, we have to sort the manager out. Uh, I, I'm not – I have zero ideas as to who they're going to look for, uh, what they're looking for. I, I You know, I'm very – doubtful of um, uh, any big name signings. Yeah, I, I know a couple big names were available. Uh, obviously, one just got snatched up today. But um, I know a couple big names were available. I don't think any of those go for Chiang Rai. Uh, so I have no clue. I'll be very surprised, uh, I think, no matter what. I think realistically, you know, we should. Uh, we deserve to, to qualify for the Champions League. Uh, I think we've put it together quite well recently uh, in, in the season. You know, we got off to a rocky start, but things have started to fall in place. I don't think we got the best situation having to play all those games up front. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. we were kind of cramming them in there towards the break. I don't think that helped us, but we made it through okay. So I, I do expect us to qualify for next season. Um, BG is going to be really tough to, to catch when we actually look at, you know, the Thai league season. Mm -hmm. Um, I expect us to challenge them. I, I really do think we have top two quality. Uh, I know we have top four quality, and I think we have top two quality. Whether or not BG has already done enough to kind of create that gap, I don't know. Uh, I would be happy with, uh, with the qualification this season. All right, so that is all we have time for on this episode of the Thai League Central podcast. Thank you to Aub and Alec for coming on, and thank you, of course, to everyone listening for sticking with Thai League Central. See you all next time.